Hi class. So, previously we have learned that the total pressure that is acting um, at a certain depth of liquid, let's say water, is not just the pressure itself, but it is also the pressure in liquid plus the pressure of the atmosphere. So, let's see example. Given that um, a piece or a slice of pizza is thrown into a lake at a depth of 3.5 meter. So, back to the formula, P is equals to H rho G for the pressure in the liquid is given by um, the height is 3.5 the density since this is a lake so the density is equals to 1000 per kilometer sorry 1000 kilogram per meter, meter cube so we substitute the value and times the gravitational acceleration say 9.81 and plus here the pressure of the atmosphere that is 100 kilopascal so you calculate back put everything in your calculator and you get the answer of one three four three three five Pascal right I believe you still remember this right so what are we going to do next is we're going to focus on this one this one the pressure of the atmosphere So do you guys know what is atmospheric pressure? So as I have previously has explained, um, atmospheric pressure is um, the pressure due to the air particle in our atmosphere. Since we are living on Earth, we have a lot of air particles colliding with each other and the weight of these air particles that acts on a surface is what we call as atmospheric pressure. So, how do we measure? How do we um, calculate the atmospheric pressure? We have this thing. We want to know what is the value of the atmospheric pressure. So, actually, atmospheric pressure can be measured using a mercury barometer. You know why we can't use the formula P equals to H rho G? Because since it is air, it's constantly changing like we don't we don't really know the exact value of the density and let alone to calculate the height we can't use this that is why we are using um a device or an an apparatus that is um called barometer so how does this thing work so this thing is called mercury barometer. How? First thing, first, you uh, go get some, let's say a long glass tube. Okay. Then what happens here is you fill the tube with mercury from the bottom until the top. And then you close the lid. And then you take another bowl here. And then you... Uh, Invert the glass tube. Initially, all of the glass tube is filled with mercury. What happens when you take out the lid? Okay, since atmospheric pressure acts on all surfaces, what happens here is um, atmospheric pressure will press on the surface of the mercury as well as 
since this is the mercury right so it has its own weight so its weight is being pulled by the gravity so the the acting of the gravitational pull on the weight and also the atmospheric pressure will cause these two things to balance each other until the net pressure is zero here's what happened okay mm, if there is no ATM then this whole thing this this every uh, thing in the glass all of this mercury will fall down but since we have ATM so the ATM will push this thing upwards until it no longer um, reduce so the length of this thing we take this as the atmospheric pressure in millimeter mercury okay since this is mercury so what we do is we measure the length of this column and this thing is called the atmospheric pressure in mmhg okay all right let's see um next the formula of pressure that is h rho g now can be used to convert the atmospheric pressure from 760mmhg into the SI unit of Pascal. So what happens here is we know that the length of the column filled with mercury, we also know that the density of the mercury, and we also know that the gravitational acceleration of the Earth. Simply put, you just substitute everything into the formula. So we know that atmospheric pressure is equals to 760mmHg. To convert it, simply replace the height. So 760, 760 is in millimeter. So you have to divide by... 1000 so that you get the answer in meter and the density of mercury you substitute here 1.36 times 10 to the power of 4 and also the gravitational acceleration just put it in the calculator you get this value so this is the value of our atmospheric pressure 1 atm is equals to 760mmhg also equals to 101396 pascal so this is the accurate value before this you use the value of 100 kpa right so this is uh, a very rough value it's not very accurate all right so next how do we measure the atmospheric pressure other than using the simple barometer here that uses mercury actually there are a lot of ways to measure the atmospheric pressure um, two of the device that is being used the first one is Ford barometer how does this uh -huh, okay so how does this um Ford barometer works so actually this thing is just a, a modified version of the simple barometer what happens here is um when there's a change of air pressure or the atmospheric pressure 
the level of this uh, mercury here will change either it's, it's increasing or it's decreasing so what happens what you need to do is you adjust the screw here until the surface here touch slightly here the ivory pointer so when it goes like this how do you measure so you take the reading here at the vernier scale and the millimeter scale so this is the amount or the pressure okay next what about um the other one aneroid barometer well aneroid barometer is a simple one i mean it's actually very small and portable compared to the Fortin barometer so how does this thing works is as you can see here there's a semi vacuum metal box this thing can either expand or contract or simply put that um, the volume of this thing will change depending on the air pressure or the atmospheric pressure so the changing of the volume will cause this yellow thingy um, maybe spring or something here will cause this thing to change according to the volume of this um, metal box so when the needle here or the, the spring here is either um, rotate to let's see how does this thing works yeah when the volume of this metal box change this yellow thing will also move and the movement of this yellow thing connected to the spring will cause the needle to either move clockwise or anti-clockwise so this is the, the simple one and more portable so actually the aneroid barometer is also the uh, barometer that is being used at a petrol station so we use this however between these two things um, between these two barometer um, the Fortin barometer is more accurate uh, because it's more sensitive compared to the uh, aneroid barometer okay so far everything's all right well let's see next page so this table 2.3 shows the differences between the Fortin barometer and aneroid barometer so let's see the first one uh-huh so you know that um for Fortin barometer the value of the atmospheric pressure is determined by the changes in the height okay as i just explained the changes of the height next what about aneroid is determined by the changes in the volume of the partial vacuum metal box yeah this thing the one that looks like the shell of a snail okay next you know that um the Fortin barometer is large and it's not portable meanwhile the aneroid barometer is smaller and is actually very portable and the Fortin barometer it takes longer time while aneroid barometer it gives a direct reading for atmospheric pressure is, is save time and faster however um, the Fortin barometer is more accurate because it can detect to up to 0 0.1 changes while the aneroid barometer can only detect to one change okay I think you can see here for yourself okay do you want to take a break um, let's see if you want to take a five minute breaks um, five minutes break you can pause this video for five minutes and come back later okay break time okay welcome back I believe you have had your break so now um, previously we have learned that um, two devices to measure the atmospheric pressure 
The first one is the Fortin barometer and the second one is, is the aneroid barometer. Um, so actually for a unit of pressure, there are a lot more. There are more. And what we have learned so far is the first one is Pascal. The second one is MMHG. Let's write it here. Um, for one ATM, one atmospheric pressure, it equals to um, the rough value we have been using, 100 kPa. What about the mercury is 760 mmHg. Okay, you can see that some example here, um, the unit, the, the, the blood pressure that we are using um, is measured in millimeter Hg, millimeter of mercury. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next, let's say if this one, this uh, barometer, we are using mercury, what if we change this to water? Well, we can we can actually accept that since water is very very lower density than mercury, then the change in height will be um will be a lot. So that's that's not very convenient, isn't it? So if compared to mercury. It's only 760 mmHg. For water, 1 atm is roughly equals to 10 meter of H2O. 10 meter is a lot. It's like uh, how many stories of buildings. So it's actually very a lot. So that's why we don't really use this. To measure because it's too high and another one is millibar and we'll see more about this in our next um, examples okay let's see example number one so the blood pressure reading of a patient is one six zero systole and 100 distal or diastole. I don't know how do you say it. So the question asks, what is the pressure of 160 mmHg in Pascal? So basically, you just need to convert between, um, you need to convert from one, for, sorry, 160 mmHg, convert it into Pascal. How? We use the formula H rho G. Okay, you know the H. H is 160. So change it into um, SI unit. Divide by 1000. And then multiply with the density 1.36 times 10 to the power of 4. And multiply with the gravity. So simply press your calculator and you get the answer as what's mentioned here. Okay. Let's see next example. Um, the maximum pressure that a wall at the seaside can withstand is 3.6 times 10 to the power of 5. What is this maximum pressure? So basically the question asks, what is this maximum maximum pressure in H2O? So you just need to change the unit from Pascal to mirror H2O. So we can use the same formula P equals to H rho G. We know that the pressure is given here. 3.6 times 10 to the power of 5 equals to H. H is the height. We don't know. Rho. Rho is the density. We know that the density of water is given here. 1000 times gravity. So the answer here 
is equals to this one it's actually just water so instead of just writing this you can put the name of the molecule here okay you get this um all right let's try some question mm. let's see if we have um let's say five four three two one pascal of pressure now change it into mmhg so given this kind of question if you want to change let's see if we take the formula p equals to h rho g can we find yes we can how simply replace the pressure is five four three two one equals to h we don't know rho do we know the density of mercury yes we do here it's given 1.36 so 1.36 times 10 to the power of 4 oh not enough space let's change here so one uh, of five four three two one equals to h one times 1.36 times 10 to the power of 4 times gravity so what is h h is 54321 divide by 1.36 times this one and you get the answer let's do together 54321 divide by 1.36 times 9.81 so your answer is 0 0.4072 meter change it to mm so you multiply with 1000 it becomes so 2 2 3 407 m m h g do you get this okay let's see another question another mm, let's say we have we have uh we have mm, 20 meter what is this 20 meter h to o so the question ask convert into m m h g how do you do it I give you three minutes to think. No, too long. Ten seconds to think. Time's up. So we know that this is pressure. 
this is also pressure so it goes back to the original equation to the original formula h rho g so in pascal both of these value is the same right so we can say that the first pressure equals to uh h rho g and it is also equals to pressure this one because um it's it's changing the the, the value of dens the density and also the height is changing so this is height one density one height two density two so since this one is equal to this one is equal to this one is equal to this one we can just take this so h1 rho 1 g equals to h2 rho 2 g so g and g cancel out each other we want to find In mmhg, so h2, h2 equals to h1 p1 divided by p. Ah, oh sorry, sorry, not p. h1 rho 1 divided by rho 2. So we know that this is the water. This is the mercury. I think we've seen this somewhere, right? Do you remember where? Yes, you do. So, simply put the value. So, H1 is 20. Rho 1 is 1000 because it's water. Oh. And let's see. What about Rho 2? Since it is mercury, so 1.36 times 10 to the power of 4. Now, press the calculator and cut it for me. 20 times 1,000 divided by 1.36 and you get the answer is equals to 1.471 meter. The question asks in mm, so times 1,000, you get that 147. Uh, one, two, three, one, M M H G. You get that? I think you do. All right. Let's continue our lesson. Here. We are going to learn what is the effect of atmospheric pressure at high altitude and also the effect of pressure at extreme depth under the surface of the sea. So we know that um, when we are going higher altitude, the air gets thinner. And because air gets thinner, that means we have less air. Because we have less air, we also have less weight. Since atmospheric pressure depends on weight of the air molecules or air particles, so at higher altitude, we got thinner air, we got lower ATM. So since this um, reduction of the air, it also means a decrease of oxygen. So, what happens if there is a decrease of oxygen? So, it means increase in heart rate. Um, yeah, or rate of breathing. Because every, bre every breath we take has less oxygen. That means we have to breathe faster. This one also cause increase in the metabolic rate. I think you can read this by yourself. Okay, we have loss of appetite, dehydration, and inability to think clearly. So what we need to do to overcome this? So we have to do exercise. If you want to climb mountains, 
you have to prepare um prepare all the equipment climb slowly to allow for your body to adjust to the changes in pressure and also drink water constantly to prevent dehydration what about aircraft basically it's uh, to increase uh, you have to increase the uh, pressure so that it matches the sea level and also recycle the air so that we don't you don't lose all the oxygen outside and also drink enough water okay this this thing i think you have to uh um read for like like really read and to understand if you don't know what you are reading you can ask okay here also info gallery i think you can see this for yourself it's, it's additional knowledge maybe it's important maybe it's not what about in um, in extreme death what happens when we go diving underneath the ocean so when we go lower what happens is the water pressure increases because why because height remember the water the pressure in water depends on height and density so the deeper you go the higher the pressure so what happens to your body to your body when you go dive deeper in the ocean your body tissue will absorb excess nitrogen gas how okay what's the percentage of nitrogen gas in our air it's clearly greater than 70% right to be exact 70 78 is it yes yeah, 78 percent so when you go deeper in the ocean um it causes your tissue your your body tissue to um absorb more gas including oxygen and also um nitrogen and every other gas that exist in the gas tank so what happens when you suddenly ascend mm, let's say after you dive then suddenly you go up very very quickly what happened is there's a change of pressure right so the change of pressure happens very rapidly and this will cause the um, nitrogen gas you absorbed to not be able to be um, exhaled so what happens is it causes bubbles in your tissue and this is actually very dangerous it can cause you to uh, be in extreme pain and in some cases it may even cause you to die that is why um those who wants to go diving needs to train um they need to be reminded that they should not ascend too quickly to the surface of the earth i mean to the surface of the sea sometimes they even need to like if they go in very very deep in the ocean they need to ascend like slowly maybe perhaps um stopping at some level so that to allow the all the excess nitrogen gas to be exhaled okay so these are the adaptations and actions that need to be taken for divers you need to exercise wear diving suit you don't go diving naked like you don't wear protection on on your body it's 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 very dangerous due to high pressure it may crush your bones but it's not really that case lah. And also you need to wear, wear a driving suit so that you don't lose heat too quickly. And this is another one. Ascend to the sea level slowly. And submarine too. Submarine must be made of steel. 
strong material to withstand high pressure of the surrounding and also the pressure of the cabin is controlled by almost the same sea level um, so that um, there are comfort in the submarine and the rest you can see it for yourself ha suddenly we are finishing our chapter 2.2 so I give you time please answer all this question and um, if you have any question you can ask me I think that's all for today I'll see you in the next class Bye.